Hello, I'm Atubo George, and I bless God for this opportunity to bring his truth to you. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, we just want to thank you today. Your word is sweet. It is so sweet. And we love you for giving us your truth. What a privilege to handle your word. Thank you. And I pray for everyone listening and watching right now. Burdens are being removed from their lives as we speak. Yokes are being destroyed right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. God is healing someone in the stomach. Something hard in your stomach. Is dissolving right now. Is dissolving right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is dissolving right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It's gone. Be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Now listen. As we share God's truth, open your heart. Whatever you desire, the Lord will give it to you. Now that's what happens in the environment of God's truth. If you open your heart, the Holy Spirit will be speaking to you. We may be talking about financial blessing, and, but then God can be doing healing in your life. So just open your heart and expect everything good right now. Praise God. So we, we've been talking about, you know, from the beginning of the year, we've been talking about the, the importance of Titan. People don't still get this. You know, someone sent me a message the other day and says, I don't like it when preachers talk about tithing. Why don't you just preach Jesus? And I said, what am I talking about? What have I, who have I been talking about? <laughs> you see, ignorance is wicked. And you know, when, when, when people began to rise up against tithing, now this was where they were headed for. And this was what Satan was using them. So, so, you know, that's why I, I wonder preachers who joined that bandwagon and began to say, Titan is not important. If you are part of those, you need to repent. You need to repent before the Lord and before your congregation. If you ever told God's people they don't need to tithe, you need to repent. Why? Because you can't even carry the burden that is coming on them. You can't carry it. I know what Jesus said. Jesus said, anyone who breaks the list of this commandment and teach men so, that man shall be called least in the kingdom. So you don't know the importance of tithing because you don't know the importance of tithing, so you break it. And when I say break it, say, hey, but are we still functioning in the law? He, Jesus wasn't talking about the law of Moses. Don't you get Matthew? Look at it. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 17. I want you to follow this carefully now. <clears throat> it says, do not think that I came to destroy the law and the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Now, that's very instructive. We'll talk about that another day. For I sh assuredly, I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, not one jot or one tittle will by no means pass from the law till all is fulfilled. Now, what's it saying? Everything, everything you find in the law will be fulfilled. Watch this. Jesus said, I didn't come to break the law, but I came to fulfill. Now, what does it mean to fulfill? It means to show the purpose, to show the reason. That's what it means to fulfill. To fulfill doesn't mean to bring to an end. No. 
to fulfill means to, to fulfill. You see how to, to bring to fullness, to make, make it, bring its purpose into being. Do you understand what I'm saying? So when it's like say to satisfy exactly, to show the reason, to show the purpose. That's what Jesus said he came to do. Now watch this. He said, For as shortly I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle will by no means pass from the Lord till all is fulfilled. Now he came to fulfill the law. What's Jesus trying to say? There are laws that we will fulfill. Now why? That's to tell you that, listen, God wasn't in error when he gave those laws or he gave his word. Now, law here also means his word. Everything that has come out of his mouth. Remember, he says, it shall not return to me void in Isaiah 55. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish the thing whereto I send it. Now, watch this, and that's this is the point I'm going to, verse 19. Whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments, he's not talking without grace or no grace. Watch this now. He says, whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so, shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Did you see that? So when you tell men not to tithe, whatever your reason is, you think you're sincere in your heart, you think pastors are eating money, so let people stop tithing. And then you begin to say, tithing is not in the New Testament. Tithing is... Okay. Go listen to the broadcast I did last week. I showed you Titan is fully in the New Testament. That's the ministry Jesus is there receiving from us. He is receiving our tithes today. Go listen to last week to me if you're just listening to me right now before you start talking. Now listen. So, if you teach men to stop tithing, and you, because you have stopped tithing, or you never used to tithe before, no problem, continue. But Jesus said who you are. You are least in the kingdom. You know, the Lord was talking to me a few days ago. And I was listening to a preacher preach. And literally he was raising money in his meeting. He was raising money. So he, he preached the sermon and then he connected it to uh, people giving money. So I, I was watching and I thought, I said, oh dear God, I, I didn't know this was where he was headed for. You know, I, I felt, I didn't feel too good about it. And then the Lord now spoke to me and said, do you know what? There is no problem with giving. I want you to listen to me very well. Whether you are deceived to give or whether you give willingly. The giving has never been the problem. So I said, Lord, what's the problem then? He said, the problem has always been the receiving. The receiving has always been the problem, not the giving. See, now that is why, that is where Satan attacks. So when you see someone who, he was rich, and then he was going to church, and then he began to give to his church or gift, whatever. And then you, you now see, this man used to be very rich, but now he's down. And he said, what happened? What did he do? Where's that your car? Oh, I gave it to my church. What, what, what happened to that your generator? Oh, my church needed a generator, so I gave it to So now you are without the generator. Uh, you know, it's for the glory of God. See, I did it for the kingdom. The Bible says we must suffer. Hey, come on now. Now, let me not enter there yet. But let me, let me address this, the, what the Lord was telling me. And the Lord said, the problem has never been the giving. Whatever made you to give, you have given. It's not a problem. The problem is how you relate with the Lord 
to receive. Because that is where a pastor may not be able to help you. See, a pastor may come and tell you every nice story to collect your money. You understand what I'm saying? He may tell you, look, we are going, we are building one church for some villages that don't have, thank you, I'll give. Oh, we need to buy a new car for our pastor. Thank you. Oh, okay, even if the pastor's car is good, we need another car for the pastor, so give. Okay, we give. Oh, there's somebody in the hospital, the church wants to pay. Okay, you give. Whether it's true, whether it's deception, but you are giving in the name of Jesus Christ. You understand what I'm saying? Because this person came in the name of Jesus Christ. Whether he's true or he's not true, you give. Fine. The problem is you... For you to receive, you have to stand in faith with the Lord Jesus Christ to receive. No pastor can lay hands on you to receive. Now, miracles do happen. But I'm talking about living the consistent. So when you see people who gave until now, they are broke. And some of them have got broke. They got angry with the church. Because you hear people say, I used to give to this church when I didn't have. I went to meet the pastor and said, the church should help me. And the pastor told me that, oh, I've not been praying enough. That's why I, I, I'm, I'm here. And then the pastor refused to help me. That's why I stopped going to church. You see, Satan has just folded your life and kept it in one corner. Because of that, you stopped going to church. You gave right, but you didn't know how the system works. That's why I keep saying, let's teach people these truths. So you now receive by your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why you must never open your mouth to castigate any giving that you have done. Don't ever wake up to say, hey, I didn't know that that pastor was fake. Oh, and I gave all my money to him. I have been deceived. No, 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 no. You see, because the Lord taught us also that even when your money is taken away from you, you can turn it into a seed. I mean, wait, when your money is taken from you from, from at gunpoint, I'm robbers come to your house, clear all your money, and you don't know what to do. Hey, you can turn that money into a seed. So that's what the Lord was telling me, that giving has never been a problem. The problem with most people is they are receiving. So they don't know how to receive. Now that's why I'm taking time to teach you these things. See, because, listen, times ahead are going to be I'm saying this smiling. I'm smiling because the Lord has given us the answer. So I'm telling you. So when it happens, you remember it didn't come just like that. The Lord spoke about it. But what do you do before that time? What do you do to prepare for that time? That's what I'm sharing with you. And that's why I began to talk to you about Titan in the first place. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Because when you open your heart and begin to do what is right and begin to relate with the Lord Jesus Christ, who is your high priest, no man will be able to control your receive. So don't, don't castigate. If you've done that, if you've, if you've suddenly realized that you were given to a false pastor, a false prophet, or a false teacher, or whatever it is, and you have opened your mouth to say, hey, so my money is just gone like that. You weren't giving to the Lord in your mind. You were making some investment <laughs> in, in a ministry or in a church or whatever you call it. So you need to repent from that. You need to repent before the Lord. Say, Lord, I repent for saying or speaking those words. I come before you, Lord, in repentance. And Lord, I want you to teach me the right way. Because no money is lost in the sight of God. Never. We'll continue tomorrow. Until then, God bless you. Bye-bye.